it going? Everybody, hope we're all doing all right this evening, actually. Not today, this evening. Back with a brand new video. And guys, as you can see, I'm out in the woods at night time. <laughs> Ooh, spooky. <laughs> yep, um, I've just got out of work. It's about half eight. I'm going to get out to the campsite, uh, get the fire going, I've got a bit of supper with me and yeah, just enjoy the evening and uh, we'll just have a bit of waffling really I think in this episode, I don't think it's going to be a long one just a few little bits and bobs to talk about but yeah, if you want to see what I get up to, please stick around So, um, I know some of the people who watch these videos, who are, uh, you know, supporters and subscribers to my quirkiness, right now might be thinking, Oliver, what are you doing? You're having some sort of mental breakdown at the moment, going in sea when it's seven degrees and, you know, catching mild hypothermia, going in woods when it's gone dark. The truth of the matter is, guys, this is the sort of stuff I've wanted to do on my channel for quite some time doing these nighttime walks, bushcraft in the dark um, and I'm finally in a place mentally where I'm just I'm in such a good place right now and honestly no can touch me really and there watch this a malicious evil dog man with Bigfoot will come and take me away <laughs> um, but no I'm in a really good place and I'm feeling brave enough to do these kinds of things but more importantly than that I want this to be the year that I take off my winter wild camp not winter wild camp sorry my solo wild camp it's been a personal goal of mine for a while to do a solo wild camp you know through the sort of failings I've had with it due to bad weather and that kind of stuff, wrong equipment, uh, it's never worked out but I'm trying to train my mind as best I can to come out here at night time and just get used to it really get used to you know the sights and the sounds and the feels of the woods at the night time because it is you know it goes without saying it's quite scary coming in here on your own when it's dark considering knowing what I know is out there pertaining to Bigfoot and you know the supernatural and things like that um, so yeah it takes a great deal of courage I think sometimes um, and as I say I'm finally feeling brave enough to do that but it doesn't change the fact that my mind does still wonder when I'm in here on my own and it's you know I'm trying to train myself to come in here for an hour two hours three hours at night to the point where I'll just be like, you know what, I'm just going to stay. Sod going back on type of thing. And that's my strategy anyway. So, anyway, we're nearly at the camp now. So I'm up here now, got the camp lit, fairly uh, sufficiently, well lit again, <laughs> by my uh, new toys, um, I'll just show you them, I had this light bar that I got from um, Go Outdoors earlier today, it was only 6 quid, but then I thought you know what, it can't hurt to have this bad boy either, this lantern, high powered LED lantern, it's called 
the Van Gogh. I'm pretty sure it's like um, is it like Van Gogh 3000 or something like that. And yeah, um, very very happy with how they're lighting up this forest and you know making me feel a bit more at ease in here. Um, but yeah, um, gonna let the fire go for a little while and then I've got some leftover Domino's pizza from work today and I'm gonna warm up for my supper. You know one thing I did actually want to talk about and I don't really want to talk about it too in depth because this isn't a political channel um, but I feel like it does need a mention and that's what's going on right now in Ukraine and you know what it could potentially mean for the world see what I can't what you know sticks out in my mind is again this isn't a political channel so don't jump there in my throat if I get any of this wrong but you know the UN the United Nations whatever you want to call it was formed after the World War Two in a sort of bid to ensure this never happened ever again you know a world at war 80 years ago guys almost 80 years ago and you know it looks like that's one human lifetime we can wrap our head around that time frame because that's roughly like how long we live for isn't it 80 years it's taken for it to kick off again you know like there's always been concerns anyway with Russia and Ukraine and all that malarkey and you know like if you buy into all fake news and stuff you see circulating on social media um, I swear there's someone watching me or not I think it's just our slides <laughs> <laughs> fucking freaky though you're out here on your own um, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, like, you know, if I, if we could all have a pound for the amount of times, you know, there's been fears of World War Three kicking off in Russia over the last 10 years, you know, we'd all be in decent pocket, wouldn't we? But it might actually happen this time. And again, I don't want to, like, speculate on it too much because I don't know enough and there's not a lot I can do, really, where I am other than just show my support for the people who've had to flee the country in fear <clears throat> you know cause we live here in our first world country with our first world problems and people just crack on they still post on facebook they still make youtube videos like i'm doing and it's just unfathomable i think that it was only 80 years ago that this sort of thing happened and it just obviously it was a world war it took over the world the world was not right for five years yeah, I don't really know what I'm getting at here. I'm just, I'm just waffling because I feel like there's eyes on me, but I don't think there is. I think there's just house lights. <laughs> oh dear. Um. Yeah, and then you know, there's us, you know, tin hat wearing loonies out here who come out here looking for unidentified creatures in the night while wow, there's this massive conflict going on in Ukraine you know and the news carries on and celebrities and it's helicopter that. maybe it's the UFOs coming to get me <laughs> I don't know it's just really strange I just find this world we live in now it's become really bizarre anyway Right, boys and girls, let's have some pizza. Warmed up and the old fire. Mm. You know, I've, I know it's like popular with an English culture. To have, fire, to have pizza cold the day after a takeaway. But I've never really subscribed to that, to tell you the truth. But yeah, it was funny because I got to work today, just before dinner. I had my lunch with me. 
had a nice curry for me tea. And then there were these Domino's vouchers on the communal table. And I just looked at Hannah, one of my co-workers, shout out to you if you're watching this. I was like, we're having Domino's today, aren't we? <laughs> so, yeah. And of course, I don't do things half measures. I've got a 13 and a half inch. Didn't finish it all. Not perfect. I'll bring it up for fire tonight. You know, one thing I wanted to say actually, just before I go home, because I've well, used all my wood up now, so it won't be much longer before this fire dies down. Just when I'm like looking around, odd time, and like I look behind my shelter there, and I just think could be anything stood behind me a person bigfoot a leshy which is a new word on this channel actually a leshy is to my knowledge some sort of forest god um that you know resembles the green man actually um and i only became aware of it recently when i was watching the osborne's reacting to bigfoot footage which if you've not seen it i'd highly recommend because it's a hilarious video um, and yeah, someone caught some sort of, you know, small creature in America on uh, camera while they were walking around at night doing what, like what I'm doing. And um, yeah, Elsie Osborne thinks it's like a fox or a bloody owl or a cat or something. I don't know about you guys, but that does not look like a cat to me. <laughs> um, but yeah. Try not to think too deeply. As I say, my purpose of coming out here at night is to get used to this. Um, and if I started thinking too deeply about Bigfoot and other things that go bump in these woods at night, yeah, I won't stay in here much longer. So, <laughs> so I'm heading off now, heading back off home. And uh, while I were at my camp, what I noticed was. Um, the thing that we're giving off the best light, really, was this lantern. So I thought, on my way home, I'll just use this, you know. Um, and yeah, I'm well impressed with it, guys. Really does light it up in here quite nicely. Um, yeah, happy days, really. But yeah, I'm heading back to main road now ain't too far back to the safety of lampposts and cars running by but I've said it before on this channel like you know Hannah who I was at work with this evening she just couldn't wrap her head around that I was going in woods in dark after work you know like this is fun for me is this this is what I enjoy doing I mean maybe not so much fun it keeps me on my toes but it's something it's like a challenge for me and you know i've said it before many times realistically you're far safer in here at night than you are in a town or a city especially a big city you know if like you're going out clubbing or whatever you know there's always risks that you could be drugged or spiked or god forbid you know attacked by somebody um people carry knives and guns you know, and I mean, even just things like, you know, um, I think my camera's playing up again. Even just things like, uh, if you're a bit inebriated, which I am no stranger to, of course, let's face it, you know, you could fall and bloody break your ankle or whatever, pass out. Not, but anyway, needless to say, I'm going to wrap this up quick now because my camera keeps glitching. Uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, as always, leave a like or a comment if you want to. Share it on social media. Subscribe if you want to. And yeah, I'll see you all on the next one. See you all further on down the road. Bye-bye.